Hello everyone and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires. Today we've got a battle of the late game discounts as Mr. Yo playing as the Huns in blue takes on the Viper playing as the Malay in yellow. Now while the players heard their herdables explore their immediate surroundings and try to get their butts up, goat butts up to Feudal Age ASAP, why don't we take a look at the Civ matchup we are going to be watching today. Now, the Huns are a civilization designed to take the fight to its enemy with speed and mobility. To start with, their Cav Archers get progressively cheaper, starting in Castle Age 10% off, 20% off at Imperial. Their Trebs fire more accurately at units, and their Stables work 20% faster, which is great for them because you can actually upgrade your Stables to train the unique unit of the Huns, the Tarkin. This is a medium cavalry unit with pretty good Pierce armor, and an attack bonus against buildings that makes it pretty darn good at late game raiding and overall destruction. Now to help support its militaries, the Huns do not require any houses whatsoever. Take a look at the top of your screen where my mouse is. They start the game at 200 population space already available, which does free up a little bit of villager construction time, but does um, come rather at the cost of 100 wood at the beginning of the game. Pivoting our eye to the bottom right of the screen, we got the Viper playing as the Malay in yellow, a naval civilization, but one that comes with a few late game land features that are incredibly powerful. To start with, their battle elephants become progressively cheaper as the game goes on, 30% off in castle, 40% off in imperial. They get all infantry armor upgrades for free, so we'll see as the Viper climbs the ladder of ages on the top right of our screen, we'll see scale mail armor and so forth light up automatically. Their militia line units can be upgraded to cost only food, no gold. So while the Malay don't actually get champions, this upgrade when combined, oh my goodness, when combined with a supplies upgrade essentially turns their two-handed swordsmen into 65 food trash units. Now lastly, to help you raid your opponent's base where one civilization has a tanky horseman with a lot of armor and a very scary torch, this civilization, the Malay, can turn to their unique unit as well, the Karambit Warrior, an incredibly cheap, super fast, overall kind of weak infantry unit, but one that only takes up half a population space. So if you've got 50 of them, they only take up 25 units in terms of population. Now, in order to advance the late game, get these features, upgrades, powerful bonuses as fast as possible, the Malay do go up to the next age 66% faster than normal, which means you can either rush, rush, rush to the next age or... If you prefer to focus on your economy, maybe a, pet, a rhino or two, maybe gather some lemons and play with the pretty blue butterflies and then catch up to your opponent, you are free to do that as well. So 14 villagers, 15 villagers apiece. Good time for us to take a look at where the bases are located as the viper pushes a zebra, as Mr. Yo pushes a zebra, pulls a rhino. Ooh, will the villager get away with no? Nah, of course not. Those rhinos, those elephants, they move a little bit faster than the boars and the uh, javelinas. And so always fun to see how many villagers take a nice little poking and a prodding. Looks like this one took a whole bunch of poking. But let's take a look at the base's primary gold for our Hun. A little bit off camp, uh, rather off the attack path. Not exactly in the rear position, but not terrible. Primary stone, secondary gold, very much exposed to the front. Additional stone to the back and additional gold as well to the front. So a bunch of resource patches to the front, which might make it easier for the Viper to lame. Forests very small and very far away from the town center. And so this, for all intents and purposes, is one big open base. Speaking of open bases, let's look at the Viper, who is now plopping down a barracks of his own, almost at the 500 food mark as Mysterio heads up to Feudal Age. Remember, if your opponent goes up to Feudal or Castle or Imperial, if we're lucky enough to see Imperial ahead of you as uh, if you're the Malay, don't fret. You can always catch up. Let's take a look. Primary gold. What? Ooh. Oh, my goodness. A mining camp in Dark Age? Is he training more villagers? No, he's getting low. Okay, so I got excited there. Sometimes when you see a mining camp with the Malay in Dark Age, you sus... <gasps> I was going to say, but you need to see three plus villagers. <gasps> you suspect a quick elephant play. I think morally an awesome channel of Age of Empires and other strategy games and RTS games. If you're not familiar, definitely check Morley Games out. Had a video, actually one of the first that I saw from Morley years and years ago 
about battle elephants from the Malay at the 20 minute mark of the game. Now, it's a little bit confusing as the Viper is going full on gold in the Dark Age, but he's also training militias, which are very food intensive. So if he wants to rush up to Castle Age, not exactly the best unit to train as the militia man, since he does cost 60 food. But in 11 seconds, we'll pivot back and look at the base, but take a look at the top right of your screen. Three, two, one. There it goes, that yellow square gets highlighted. And the Viper, we are seeing this more and more and more, and it is something that has existed in other RTS games. Uh, for example, StarCraft, for a long time, players building proxy barracks, proxy pylons, proxy everything. And in Age of Empires, all of a sudden, now we're seeing more and more players put proxy structures down. I really do want to look at the Viper's base, but he is not making it easy for me, being uh, the one putting on the aggression here. Trying to bust his way in. How many villagers on gold does he have? Still just the three. His settlement. Oh, I hope I don't miss a kill. It looks like there is a bit of a... Okay, so I, I got really excited over nothing. I thought we were going to get to see some kind of fast elephant play out of our Malay. But no, he's investing significant resources in both his infantry and in archers. One is very food intensive. One is very gold intensive at the moment. And that is the exact opposite <laughs> of trying to go up to Castle Age and get out elephants. So I, I apologize. I got excited over nothing in any event. Uh, over nothing. Forget it. There's a villager in here as well. Where is she going? He does have 200 stone if he wants to plop down a town, uh, town center, a uh, tower. But I believe Mr. Yo has already seen the proxy expansion as well. He needs to get rid of this villager ASAP. You, the last thing you need... In the midst of all the battles and all the microing and all the insanity that happens is a random villager that can build stuff. And so exactly, Mr. Yo agrees with me, goes straight after the villager. Will he get her? Oh my god! So close! Oh, he does ultimately get her and all of the construction potential is gone for the Viper who destroys his own tower. But look at the kill count. That was a very expensive snipe for Mr. Yo. He lost five scouts. Maybe four, trying to get that one villager. I mean, did get the villager at the end, so the kill count is one economy for him. Five military losses. And now the Viper's here with ranged units as well, so this little nook isn't as safe as you uh, once thought it would be. Let's take a very quick look at the Viper's base. Also, as I mentioned, completely open. Three forests very far away. Jacking lumber on the south side of this forest. Very interesting. Gold. We saw off to the side, it was primary stone, just like Mr. Yo's uh, primary gold. Kind of, but not really to the back, kind of to the center. Additional gold off campus to the left, additional gold off campus to the right, and additional stone up here. By the way, has Mr. Yo even seen? Okay, he has seen his opponent's base. And now he has to get the hell out of here. The Viper's army, 10 army count to 4. He is 29 villagers to 29 villagers. And now he catches out some berry pickers, some lemon pickers as well. They run away, though, so he's got to basically do nothing with these men-at-arms. Just attack. There's a random spearman, a little brother. Somebody brought along a little brother. And so he's joining in just to maybe, maybe but not really zone out some scouts. Not that a scout would ever engage into three men-at-arms as well. And now the archers. Oh! What the hell happened here? <laughs> Mr. Yo tames the beast. Says, you know what? I'm going to domesticate you. I'm, I will break your will as you attack lions. Make things safer for me and my settlement. I'm going to crush your spirits by vipering the viper. And he manages to corral and pen in one of these scout units. <laughs> oh, man. Always fun to watch these two players. I, it's always fun to watch all these IELO players. But sometimes when little things like this happen. Now, Mr. Yo, I will say... Based on the Viper's play, Mr. Yo is in a bit of early game trouble just because all of this movement time, all of this maneuvering of villagers going away from the wood line down south, going away from the berries to the east, going down, heading up north from the lumberjacking, the Viper is doing an amazing job keeping his opponent kind of running around and not really doing much, accomplishing much, gathering much. So I'm really curious, yeah, the Eco, the Viper, look at that. He's ahead like 15% already in Eco, even though he's only ahead two villagers, and he is heading up to Castle Age. 
What's this up north here? Archer takes a bit of fire from a skirmisher. But Mr. Yo has secured himself. Ooh, maybe not. Maybe temporarily. Maybe the Viper just wanted this high ground. Mr. Yo, should he be targeting the scout? Should he be targeting the men at arms? Should he be targeting the archers? Says he wants the scout. Gets the scout. The high speed, high octane chase continues here to the north. Where the Viper's archer. Oh my god. By virtue of missing ballistics. Now he's getting cavalry? Is he going elephants? I'm I'm so confused. The Vi He must be going elephants. This is the, like I said, when you see three villagers in the Dark Age going on gold, that is a classic indicator for the Malay that they're going elephants. Oh, he switched. There we go. Finally, I'm glad we caught that on camera. As two of the Viper's archers now bite the dust, and there it is! The first battle elephant is about to pop out at the 18-minute mark. Mr. Yo suspecting perhaps that his opponent is going full on feudal age aggression has not scouted to his own detriment dum dum about to pop out of the ether oh goodness gracious mr yo is expecting some kind of feudal play the viper rushes up to castle age and whereas it would take everyone else 160 seconds 160 seconds for the malay only 96 so within a minute and a half, the Viper has already reached Castle Age. He's already up to three, four battle elephants. They're getting husbandry. Now they are missing bloodlines and their armor upgrades are Shiite. Uh, trying not to swear. They're pretty bad, the armor upgrades on these. That's the trade-off when they're 30% cheaper right now. Not too sure where this guy on the right is going. Okay, he's, uh, he's going to get healed up by a monk. And so that's the kind of trade-off you have with these elephants. That being said, they still have 250 HP and they are still a Castle Age unit. Mr. Yo doesn't even have the resources needed to go up to Castle yet, but he's got Spearman. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> the last thing you want to be doing as the Huns is get stuck in Feudal Age building Spearman against Battle Elephants. What are you to the south? You're also a Battle Elephant, the Viper has managed to get five villager kills already kill count 19 to 13 he's got one more extra villager compared to his opponent populations are very identical and mysterio is finally clicking up he is finally clicking up now he's done a decent job defending here but he's losing more and more villagers six villagers seven villagers i mean now you're now you're kind of reaching the point of no return you know i i've always questioned when Pro players GG a little bit too early if they lose three, four villagers in the early stages of the game. But when you're now down eight villagers, your opponent's in castle. Wow, there you go. I really I really figured it would be the point of no return here for uh, Mr. Yo. If this eight dead villagers, if these, or rather, no, no, this, right? This statistic, it's uh, in singular. If this statistic, instead of eight, was maybe a three or a four, I suspect he would probably stay in here. But the Viper... With the maneuvers, again, you see three villagers on gold in the Dark Age for the Malay. You kind of suspect, uh, you kind of suspect them kind of quick Castle Age elephants or uh, honestly, even knights. Who's kidding who? But when you have elephants, why the hell would you go knights? So you got double the HP. Look at that attack. I think the uh, knight base attack is a 10. This is a 12. And the fact that they're missing the last two armor upgrades not that relevant in early castle age more relevant in the later stages of the game once more powerful archer units start coming out or more powerful uh spearman line units start coming out but right now 20 minutes into the game does it really matter that the malay battle elephant is missing the last two upgrades absolutely not i suspect if mr yo had put up a stiffer resistance and gotten rid of some of these elephants it might be the viper who ggs but look at this Mr. Yo just now discovering where the hell, with this one skirmisher, discovering all of this infrastructure. He didn't know about this at all. He only knew about the archery range. If he knew that there was a uh, stable here, I'm sure he would have bought the resources, balanced his economy as crazily, as quickly as possible to try to get as cool up to Castle Age ASAP. But there you go. Look, not every game lasts until Imperial. Not every game <laughs> lasts until the hour minute mark of the game. Sometimes the players say, hold my beer. And the Viper, generally a player who, eh, so far in the games that I've seen of his in the last couple of years, is a pretty strong defensive player. 
when he wants to, he can put on the aggression very well. And he shows us the uh, that aggression here with the uh, the glaive wielding man on the elephant. And man, oh man, let's take a look at the economies and the numbers because Mr. Yo was just completely caught unawares. The Viper did a good job selling the Feudal Age aggression to even yours truly. Remember, I got so excited in the beginning of the game seeing the villagers on gold, then a little less excited once I saw the archery range, and then a lot less excited once the men-at-arms and the archers started coming out. I figured, okay, you know what? He's not really rush, rush, rushing. He tried to sell it, tried to get his opponent to invest in food and wood units. Probably the food there is the more relevant uh, resource, the wood not so much. And Mr. Yo, I guess, bought it hook, line, and sinker. And then all of a sudden, your opponent, the Malay, just shows up. It's like a very early version of the ever-present stress when you're playing against the Burgundians. You know, you, you in the late stages of the game, you never know when that notification will sound, and all of a sudden, 200 army supply barrels down the, uh, the, the your face with those ridiculous militiamen with their ridiculous cavalry up uh, bonus attack up bonus, uh, sorry, cavalry attack bonuses with the Malay. This is what you have to worry about. This is your sword of Damocles. You don't have to wait till the late game. <laughs> you have to wait 20 minutes in and the Viper just steamrolls 25 kills to 13. But who cares about that? It's the eight villager kills that are the relevant thing here. Nine skirmishers to nine elephants. Yeah, we know who wins this battle. Peak APM, the Viper going furious with over 200 APM. Mystery O also in the, let's call it the middle of the game, although 11 minutes in, unfortunately, is the middle of the game. Resources look pretty evenly distributed. Uh, Economy is about just under 20% bigger for the uh, yellow Malay. He's got a bit more wood. He's got a thousand more gold. Relics, obviously, no, no one's gotten any relics. Food is identical and stone. Nobody's even bothered. Uh, conversions are obviously zero and raisings and losses are zero. So this is just truly a case of the Viper saying, you know what? I'm just going to try to end this game ASAP. And in this particular instance, it worked with the absolute. I mean, again, he sold yours truly. I thought we were going to get to see some kind of meandering. We've seen the Malay recently. Every single time we see the Malay, it's Karambits uh, for the most part in the last month or so. And so it's very refreshing to see a very quick elephant build order and Mr. Yo just not ready for it whatsoever. Although I suspect if he wanted to take a little bit more time, pump out a few more spearmen, uh, maybe he could have held a little bit longer because look at this war elephant plus 15 cavalry plus 15. So that's a 30 extra attack bonus because this unit has both the cavalry and the war elephant. And even at 30% off, these guys are not cheap or free. Whereas the Spearmen, completely cheap and free. And so Skirmishers to snipe the Monk, great. Once they die, focus on the Spearmen. But Mysterio is out of wood entirely. And like I said earlier, look at the distance his villagers had to walk in order to jack lumber over here, safe away from the prying eyes of these elephants. The Viper doesn't even know there's a forest down here. And so the Viper doing an amazing job of just keeping Mr. Yo's economy, which on the whole was very similar in terms of size to his down a little bit, but not, you know, end of the world down right up until the end of the game when the elephants started massacring everyone. But the lumberjacks had to escape. They escaped on move command. The berry pickers had to escape. These lumberjacks had to escape. So Mr. Yo's units were doing a lot of moving. And a lot of moving means a lot of not gathering resources why our Malay, after 20 minutes already, has a 15% bigger economy than his opponent. And that is why the Malay, unharassed back home with his open base, which looks about as lackluster as you'd expect a base to look at, at the 20 minute mark of the game with double stables, archery range, and a monastery, absolutely overwhelms, surprises the caster, surprises Mr. Yo, and with the magic elephant pulled out of the uh, hat, not a rabbit, but a big giant elephant, it is the Viper who takes the W, but GG in a short, but overall fun game to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.